What's up, everybody? It's Jason Creel of the Lawn Care Life YouTube channel. Appreciate you guys being with me, whether you're watching live or on replay. I'm going to try to be on here for about an hour today, and I hope some of you um, will engage me with some questions here. So if you've got a question, go ahead and post it um, whenever you see this, and I will try to respond and do the best we can as far as that goes. I'm also going to spend some time today going over the uh, yard book platform. So the idea is uh, address any questions you have. If there's breaks in the action, we're going to be uh, showing you some of the new features that yard books come out with. I've been using yard book for uh, since 2015. So very happy with the platform. But anyway, they, they've coming out with some stuff that's in beta right now. Some of it's already out. Some of it's coming out. So want to go over uh, some of that. But uh, as far as lawn care goes, just wanted to mm -hmm. touch base with you about that. Um, I sprayed my lawn, do weed control and fertilization. I got out there um, in Alabama, if you're new to the channel. It was out there, you know, early January spraying pre-emergent, post-emergent, and uh, got all my yard sprayed. So I'm happy about that. And and then I'm, I basically got a little bit of a break in the action until March. When March comes around, I'm going to start putting out some slow release fertilizer to get started. You know, depending on the weather and all that, but hopefully get some fertilizer out there to help with the green up of the lawn. And so, anyways, I know some of you that are uh, further north still cold. Um, I know a lot of times the cool season grasses just stay green year round, but not, they don't necessarily grow a whole lot in the cold weather. But as you can probably tell, it's not going to be too much longer before everything cranks up. I think a lot of people really get going in March. For me, you know, from a mowing standpoint, I'm not mowing for a business anymore, but typically with my Bermuda lawn, I will mow it you know, in March, I, I try to scalp it down pretty low. And by doing that, you let the sunlight get down to the roots, which starts to warm up the soil, uh, you know, and, and that warm the soil. And that's going to give you earlier green up. So anyway, well, I appreciate you guys joining. And we will get to some of these comments here. Been part time for four years now, making the decision to go full time this year. That's from Cole. Well, that's great. Um, Cole, are you um, spraying weeds, mowing grass? What, what have you been doing for the past four years? And where are you located? I'd be curious to know that. Uh, let's see here. Somebody had a comment here. South Florida, what's up? All right. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. And um, as far as the yard boom, again, I'll keep working on the comments. Some of the questions I had to actually um, ask today, because I've heard for years, I was like, Yard Book has, like, I have an Android phone. You know, I just prefer Android. This is a Samsung Galaxy something. So the Yard Book, Yard Book has had the Android app for years. Again, I use it all the time. I mean, I go on my phone. Typically, what I use it for is I'm just going on there and I'm, I'm looking up an address. I've got a lot, hundreds of customers and so I go in there, hit the properties, go, and it connects with Google Maps and takes me to the house. So that's what I'm doing a lot of times with it. But um, what I've been told is that there is an iOS app. So if you've got an Apple phone, iPhone, uh, then the app is in beta and you can get access to some of these. Uh, if I'm talking about stuff today in this video and you're a Yardbook customer, if you're not, you can go to yardbook.com, sign up for a free account. But if you... Um, want access to some of the beta information. Hold on, let me make sure I get this email right. You've got to uh, okay. You if you're uh, you if you want if I talk about something in beta and you want access to it, email yardbook at support101 at yardbook.com. So that's support101, the number at yardbook.com. So for instance, if you want the iOS Apple app for Yardbook. Mm -hmm then you need to email them and get permission for that. All right. <clears throat> Best size zero turn mower for a mowing business. You guys can leave your comment on here too if you've got an opinion. For me, if I had to pick one size, of course, it's, it's going to depend on your properties and all that, but I probably would go with a 52 inch, um, whether it be a stand or walk behind or a ride mower. 
and, and I used to have 48 inch, 52 inch, but I wasn't doing a lot of huge properties. Obviously, got a lot of huge flat properties. I'd get a 60 inch, you know, but for just a versatile size that that'll, you know, anyway, I just preferred the 52 and the 48. And and if, if had to choose one, I'd probably go with the 52 because my thought is the 52 is going to give you you know, four extra inches of cut on every yard. And the only advantage really, in my opinion, of the 48 is it may be a little bit cheaper price, but then it might fit through a one, you know, occasionally there would be a gate that the 48 would fit through, but the 52 wouldn't. So I'm like, well, the 52 is going to benefit me on every yard, except for those few that the gate's too small. So anyway, I would say 52 inch. That's my final answer. Uh, mutter, uh, mowing, gutter clean, landscape, pressure washing. I live in Joplin, Missouri. Hope I said that right, Joplin. Uh, all right, Cole. Hope it goes well for you, and certainly can make money doing all those things. I think at some point you gotta. Well, I, I, I've personally never been able to diversify a whole lot. So if you can get a successful mowing, gutter clean, landscape, pressure washing going, that's great. At some point, I, what I would say is, you know, don't have four mediocre operations when if you could have one good operation going so you might you know maybe a situation where and maybe gutter cleans kind of just in the fall and all that but if it, it became obvious that the pressure washing was greatly out producing your mowing or vice versa then i might like put more of my resources toward the one that's more profitable or that you enjoy more that just makes sense to me Peace and love from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Any tips for someone who's just starting out? I don't have much money, but I do have a handheld blower and a push mower. Any grants or anything for me? I don't know about grants and getting money and all that. I, I think, but I'll say this. I think in some ways it's not a bad thing that you don't have money. And what I mean by that is I hope that it motivates you. You know, I, I know when I started, I've had three line business, like it, it was just kind of a fear of failure. And so all three times I worked a part-time job while starting my lawn care business. <clears throat> well, that wasn't because I necessarily wanted to work a part-time job, but like, I, you know, you're in a situation where you, you don't have the luxury of having a, a big bank account to fall back on. And it, it, it motivates you more. So I did things that I don't really do now, like work part-time job and like, uh, I was knocking on doors on Saturday sometime, you know, do, doing what you had to do to get the thing off the ground and going. So what I'm saying is don't uh, – wouldn't feel sorry for yourself or anything. Let, just let it be a motivating factor. You know what? I don't have anything to start with right now but a push mower and a blower. I'm going to go got a trimmer and get going. But it's not going to be that way for long because I'm so focused and so motivated that I'm going to grow. So – yeah, I mean, there's a gazillion videos on YouTube to help you as far as like tips and all that. As far as getting customers, I'd be active in Facebook groups. I'd get to know people that, you know, if I was mowing, I'd call all the little weed control companies and ask them to send me their mowing customers. Just like as a weed control guy, I call the mowing companies and ask them to send me their weed control. Barnes Lawn Tree says, what's up, Jason? He says, I run a 6136 and I rarely find a proper I can't access. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you go to two, when you got two mowers, then that opens up a whole new opportunity then. Because like I said, with a 36, I mean, in my opinion, if I had a 36-inch mower, I'm not even owning a push mower. You know what I'm saying? I, if, it, if the 36-inch mower that cost me thousands of dollars is not going to fit through the gate, then I'm just not interested in the property. You know, I'm not going to go buy a $2,000 push mower or a $200 push mower. I'm just saying I'm, I'm not doing it. I mean, that's kind of the way I look at it. Um, but yeah, if you got two, well then, yeah, you can go with a 60 and a 36, or I used to have like a 52 and a 42, you know, a 40, a 42 inch Walker that would bag, you know, cause there, if there was a little bit of market for that, but you could kind of bag with it. Or if you had a, a gate that the, the 52 wouldn't fit through then the 42. So when you combine two mowers, it just opens up a lot of opportunities for you. I was in my Bermuda Zoysian centipede line notes, a bunch of small black fast moving bugs Tinch bug, bill bug, spittle bug, the ideas in Birmingham. Um, was that recently, I wonder? Chinch bugs are, are like that big. I mean, you got to get down in the ground and dig around. And uh, my understanding, chinch bugs, I don't I don't know what time they're at. I see them in the summer, and it, and I, it was basically looks like your yard has been 
is dry and drought stressed, but you're like, wait, we've had plenty of rain. Why does it, you know, look like that? When the chinch bugs get out of there, it's this tiny little thing, um, super tiny. So you now you're not going to stand up and just see chinch bugs running across your yard. Spittle bugs, I mean, they're black. They might, you know, be that big. I'm going to say a half inch long, black with a orange stripe across their back, I believe. I see them in the summer a lot of times in centipede yards. Uh, they're a little bit tricky to kill. I don't know what a bill bug is. I don't know. So anyway, I'm not really sure. Uh, Tau Star is a product we use a lot for controlling bugs in the lawn. So if you want to do something about it, you could do Tau Star. It's like one ounce per gallon of water and a little handheld sprayer or backpack. What would you charge using a commercial push mower? Yes, I'll take a few less, but I'm not looking for huge houses. I remember this company. I don't know if they're still in business or not. This was years ago. There was a company in Texas. I think it was called Just Mo or something like that. And they would basically make their prices public. And for a long time, they just used push mowers. And so they focused on small yards. And it was like, it was no hidden. Like, here's our pricing structure. You know, for 2,000 square feet, it's this. For 3,000 square feet, it's this. And again, they're, they're, they had a business model. I kind of liked it, honestly, except for the idea of pushing the mower. Um, but it was, it was, you know, route density, and we're going to keep our overhead down by just using push mowers. And there's going to be a market of people that want it push mowed and don't want a big zero turn on their property. So, um, but I mean, as far as prices go, I, I, I have no idea. I don't know about your market and things like that. I, I personally don't think, what mower you use should change the price in a whole lot. You know, if you've got a $50 push mower or a, you know, $15,000 zero turn, the people just want their yard looking good. So if it's a $50 yard, you can't say, well, I'm pushing, so I'm going to charge 60. You know, I, I don't look at it that way unless there's just a, a huge demand for people that like, I just want my yard push mow. You know, like for instance, if uh, somebody in your, you had a big market for people that wanted battery, push mowing you know we we don't want it quiet we don't want the noise we don't want the big mower and, and there may be a market for that where you can separate yourself from other people and say hey that's what we do we push mow with a battery push mower and we're a little bit more expensive now you don't have to tell them that but maybe somebody would pay for that so anyway i don't know for me it's it's you know if i had a it just depends on the market weekly by week if i had a four thousand square foot yard it's you know spraying it's about 50 bucks you know so I mean, that's a pretty small yard. 3,000 might be 45, something like that. I mean, you, you don't, even if it's tiny, unless you can really get a bunch of them in the same neighborhood, you can't go too low on your prices. I mean, uh, $30, you know, just doesn't go very far anymore. So you got to think through that a little bit. Uh, Cole said, you are 100% correct. What was I correct on? Let's see. Oh, I was talking about him like diversifying too much. You know, if he starts making a million dollars pressure washing, then I'd sell my lawnmower. You know, if I, if I was making a million dollars mowing grass, I'd sell my pressure washer. I'd just keep it for my own house, pressure wash my mower when it got dirty. Uh, he says, yep, that's right. Why walk when you can ride? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I remember I went to a point when I was mowing, I said, forget it. I'm not, I'm not dealing with push mowers anymore. I'm riding. Um, this week, forget what Franken said. Oh, he said this week is when he saw the bugs in Birmingham. I've been seeing these little, I, I don't know, look like almost like a mosquitoes like flying around everywhere. And, and I don't know what they were. I forget. Some kind of black bug. I don't know what it is. But um, anyway, how do you fight off bugs from getting on you in the summer while working, especially ticks? Uh, I don't know. Somebody got an answer for that. I don't know how you keep ticks off of you. I, I mean, other than not going in the woods, but you may just live in an area where they have a lot of ticks. All right, you guys keep posting your questions. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of update on the yard book. Again, if you're, if you're new to the channel, I've been using yard books since 2015. They're one of the sponsors of the channel and really find it to be a great software. And one of the things I like about it, I find it extremely user-friendly and also find that they continue to improve the software over time. I mean, I'm constantly, it's not, they're not just emailing me. They send out broad scale email saying, here's a new feature we've added. This is a new feature we added. So um, if you're wondering, because I've heard this over and over, they've had an app for the Android phone. They have not had one for the iPhone, but they are. It, they have one, it's in beta. So you have to email them, their support team. Let me find that support again. I 
forgot the uh, support 101 at yardbook.com. All right. So email them if you want to access to the Android app. And they're supposed to be making improvements and more features on the app. I use the app a lot, on pretty much on a daily basis when I'm working. I'm on the Yardbook app personally. Okay. Uh, the other thing to mention here, I'm, I'm reading off some of the stuff from my email. The support from Yardbook is great. Is that a typically always going to reply within 24 hours, sometimes within one hour. Okay, so if you have a question, another thing I just noticed, I was doing this today, honestly, there is a lot of online tutorials for Yardbook, like on their, they've done a lot on, uh, if you have a feature on there and you're like, how do you make it happen? So today I was looking at like the chemical tracking feature, they had chemical tracking 2.0 and how you attach a chemical that was used to a specific uh, invoice or job or task on that invoice. So there's, you know, things like that, but you, you just click on the, uh, the information about that and it kind of walks you through it step by step. Gerald's saying that Mason bees, is that the bug? I'm wondering if that's the bug he's saying. He's, I don't know what that is, but he may be right. So, all right. So let's, um, let me do this for a second. Y'all keep posting questions because I'm going to come back and answer more questions. But right now, I'm going to share my screen. And that's all, you know, the more technical stuff I do on here, the more likely is something's going to go wrong. But I'm going to share entire screen, click on it, share. You know, all right. So what I did, I didn't want all my customers' information showing up on this live stream. So we created basically a, a dummy account, a demo account, whatever, on yard book and i just put one customer in there so you go to my customer here i put his first name's bill his last name's y so it's bill e bill y um so <clears throat> if you go in here and, and you can say this is if you if you don't have a yard book if you have a yard book account and use you you'll sort of understand some of the navigation if you don't have it i can walk you through a little bit of it but i'm mostly trying to show you some of the new features so one of the things I want to show you, and you go to the site map down here, and it's, it pretty much shows you just about every feature. And I use this one a lot, lot measurement. So if I type in an address here, I can just trace it out, the yard out, and it spits out the square footage. So that's great. That's that's It has new. That's been out for a little while, and uh, that's a feature I use a lot. Um but let me just give you an example of some of the new features. Here it is under this lob integration. You got print and mail. So maybe some of you want to do some sort of, some of you might still be mailing out paper invoices. I, I do some of those. Um, but typically, I'm emailing or texting invoice through Yardbook. But if you want to do, um, <clears throat> if you want to mail out the invoice, so I can go down here. I can select the invoice. And let's see here. Print and mail review. I'm going to go with color, add a payment stub. Yeah, why not? Okay. And let's see here. Let's see. I'm going to go to mailing preview, and you'll see what it's going to look like. So here you go. So there's your invoice here, and it, it, you can put – it's already formatted for a double window envelope if you want to do it like that, you know, if you have the double windows on the – uh, left side there. So that's one thing where you could do a mass mail out to your customers. Um, they have a, a new get quote experience. So if you go in the site map and the, anyway, the customers can basically, uh, well, I understand it is you, they put their own address in and select what service you want. And you can almost have a catalog of services on there that they can search through and let you know like what they're interested in. Like, hey, I'm interested in somebody to mow my grass. Okay, we'll click grass cutting, put their address in, things like that. So a better uh, improved get quote experience. There's also uh, ability to display properties on the invoice. So if you want to show, like for instance, I've got a few customers that have multiple properties. And so they say, well, this is my business and this is my personal property or this is my mom's house, but I pay the bill and it's, you know, that kind of thing. You can dis, uh, display that. You can attach chemical records when auto invoicing. You can display the most recent payment on the invoice because I have people call me. They're like, did I pay my bill last time? Or, or you know, even once in a blue moon, they might even question, you know, whether you record it right or something like that. So you can go on there. And another way I do that, there's just a timeline feature where it goes back and shows every payment they've ever made 
and you can actually email that to them. You can reprice your recurring invoices. Let's say you got lawn mowing set up every Thursday and every Thursday they're going to create an invoice for 50 bucks. And all of a sudden you, you want to go up on that. You can um, go ahead and, and all your recurring invoices, it, it will, you can automatically update it to change the price on those. So it'll say, well, it was 50, but now it's going to be 55. So you go change that feature. Uh, in, in the description of this video, actually, I have a lot of this typed out for you. So you can look into that. Another thing I thought was pretty cool, two more features I want to highlight, online review management. So I was playing around with this today. You put your... Uh, the one I, I want to basically get Google reviews. Okay, that's the most important to me. Now, Facebook reviews and things like that are, are great too, but it had like next door reviews. And so you have the link that you send people, and sometimes I'll text it to them and say, click this link and please leave me a, a positive review. But now you can do it through Yardbook. So you put your link in there for Google reviews, and it'll have a, a template that you can use to. Uh, email them or email multiple customers. And then I'll, the link's right there. It's like, hey, you know, dear customer, thank you for your business. Um, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a, a positive review for my business on Google. Here's the link. Uh, and of course, if you have any complaints not having a positive review, then, then uh, please call me or email me. I'd love to address the issue. So <clears throat> sorry about that. So those things built into Yardbook. And then the surcharge, they have a new feature where you can add surcharges and uh, fuel surcharge, late fees, things like that. You can customize it to the business. So let me let me see if I can figure that out. I think I already did it on this one. So like I put on here, grass cutting for Billy, five hundred bucks. Yeah, that's top, that's right, five hundred dollars, Billy. Pay it up. You know, big yard, whatever. But uh, you can add, you can go in and add like a fuel surcharge, but there's also, I'd have to look back exactly how, how it was to do it. Let me see if I can do that real quick. Hold on just a second. Uh, let's see, fuel surcharge. So to go to fuel surcharge in beta, again, email them if you want access to these things. Okay, so you're going to go to your invoices and then you're going to put apply surcharge. So let me try that real quick. Hold on. Let's see here. Invoices. Um, well, let me see if I can figure it out. Oh, here we go. So it's this down green area by here. And I'm going to put apply surcharge. And then you can select, let's say I want to select everybody's, everybody's invoice. Now I only got one customer here, it's Billy. But it's a 10% or let's, you know, you go down to whatever, 3% uh, fuel surcharge. And, and you can, it says add a new type. So I could do a, you know, late fee here and 3% or 10% or 100%, whatever. But anyway, I'm going to add, it's 3% of the invoice total and I'm going to add that surcharge. And then boom, it actually emails you when it's done. The last time I did, it didn't take long at all. Now these people, they already, uh, they have a zero dollar balance, so but so it put on here fuel surcharge, but it's zero dollars because they didn't have a balance. But you, you get the point. It's going to automatically add that fuel surcharge to you, like like I show here. It's already added fuel surcharge fifty bucks. Now, I already did this one, so it's not three percent. I did it with ten percent the other day. All right, so those are pretty uh, cool features. Hopefully, I'm back now. Let's see if you got some more questions but those are some of the features that coming out with yard book and they're constantly you know, doing things i use it for you know invoicing and texting I, I find it very handy i basically what i do a lot of times i'll have the invoices created and i go do the work and at the end of the day i'll come back and i'll mass email out my invoices and or charge your card on file and i'll still email them um are you raising prices this spring andrew well you know, I'm doing weed control and fertilization, and last year I went up uh, a decent amount. Basically, seven percent was kind of my general. Some a little more, some less. This year, I was basically prepared to because I kept getting information that fertilizer was going to keep going up and up and up and up. And it, actually, the fertilizer is kind of stabilizing and started coming back down. I think I saw something the other day, which I'm 
I'm not saying it's cheap, but I think it was basically as low as it had been since 2021, the, the raw materials for fertilizer. So that was good. Uh, so I ended up going up on some, basically the way I'm looking at it is like, if I have a customer that, you know, what, what would this yard cost if they were a new customer today? You know what I'm saying? So let's say I go at a yard and it's $60. And I'm like, you know what? If I pick that customer up today, it would be 65. So I want to charge them basically 65, raise it to get get them where they should be if I picked them up today. Well, some of them, I'll do that, you know, they're already where I want them to be. They're in a neighborhood where I've got a lot of route density. I'm very profitable in this neighborhood. So I'm like, end up not raising in near as many as I thought. So I didn't do across the board raise, but I did go up on some of them. All right, possibly. I wonder what a mason bee is. Mason bees, I'm, I'm assuming some kind of bug. So I've been seeing some bug flying around too, and I don't know what it is. With the economy issues, how much higher do you think the price of weed control items will go? And Mississippi is high, hard to find stuff in stock. Yeah, I mean, I buy my stuff from Harold's. Um, I, I don't, I know I've heard supply issues and things like that. So I, I don't know exactly how it is at this very present moment, but uh, like I said, fertilizer, I believe, is coming down, which is good. Uh, chemical costs are going up, which is not good. I've heard, I heard the other day that Princep, I believe it was, which is like Simazine, I, I forget if it was going up 40% or 60%. It was something astronomical. I thought, man, I mean, I imagine it's just a supply issue is all I can figure, supply and demand. I don't think it's like the materials all of a sudden are so much more expensive. But, you know, a lot of stuff just keeps going up. Again, the fertilizer, which is a huge part of our expenses, at least for what I do, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's coming down, thankfully. Do you have a minimum price to spray lawns? Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, I was actually playing around my pricing chart today, and some of you may think it's too low, but, like, basically anything under 2,000 square feet is $38. Now, I mean, I had... I had one yard I was showing. I, I think it may have been my favorite yard I had. I have, uh, I don't know, 300 some yards. And this, if he had, it might have been 200 square feet of grass. I mean, it was like, it was like park the truck and 30 seconds later, you're done. I mean, pretty much. So I was doing his for 30. And I thought, man, if I had a thousand yards like this, I would be so happy to do these for $30 all day long. So I mean, there, I'm not. There are some exceptions for like literally the tiniest yard is about ever seen. I mean, so it was about the size of a, an automobile, you know, that was about how big the yard was. All right. Is a steel FS 130R all right? I think those are pretty powerful. Um, I don't have, a, have that particular trimmer. I think my dad may have one of those. I'm not sure, but uh, I'm pretty sure that, I mean, it's, it's probably more power than you need to be honest, just, just out trimming even for your business, whatever. If you like power now, if you're out trimming really heavy jungles, then that, that'll probably be good. But I, I imagine it's a great trimmer. I just I can't speak from my own personal experience because I've never used that one, but I do think that's gonna have plenty of power for you. All right, let's see. This guy says the 130s, he gives him the thumbs up. And he says yes, so. All right, you guys, um, bring on your questions. I won't drag this out unnecessarily, but if you've got more questions, I'm happy to address those. Power tool expert, and uh, I put a new cam in it. All right, but as far as the lawn care goes, let me run over that real quick again. I was talking about the beginning. Like I've been spraying my pre and post emergent. I was using Prodiamine, then I was using Change Up and Metzofuron on Bermuda, Zoysia, Centipede, St. Augustine. Now, simply saying, Austin, I wasn't putting the metzofuron in there. It's the first time I've used that combination early in the year. And the reason I added the change of metzofuron, I think it'll do a better job of some of the tough weeds that I deal with. So really sorry about that. Got that old wheel, sprayed them. That was, you know, a lot of walking. I, I'm using my Graham spray rig, which is great. And now in January, I'm sorry, it started in January. In March, I'll start putting out slow-release fertilizer. So I used to do two rounds of pre and post emergent round one, round two, then fertilize. Last year I added in spectacle flow in May. And so because I added spectacle flow in May, I had to kind of adjust my fertilizer uh, timing. So I'll put the fertilizer back till 
uh, March, then spectacle flow in May, then come back with more fertilizer uh, the next round after that, like June or so. So <clears throat> worked out great last year. I honestly think my yards look better than they ever have before. So I was happy about that as far as a weed control standpoint. Hey, Jason, is there anything I can use to take the smell away from herbicides? Not that I know of. I, there may be. I just I wouldn't be familiar with that. What brand fertilizer you use? I buy from Harrell's, H-A-R-R-E-L-L-S. They do not have a storefront, at least not. I don't think that's not their typical business model. I've heard they might have one brick and mortar store or something. But um, typically there's a sales rep. You can go to Harrell's.com, probably find your sales rep, and they will ship it directly to your door. So they carry the I buy just about everything from them. Fertilizer. Y'all may have seen my friend James Bartley. He's been a guest on here several times. He is my Harold sales rep. He covers Alabama, Panhandle, Florida, some of Tennessee, some of, uh, I think, a lot of Mississippi. So he's great, and I buy from him, and they have a good price. I mean, fertilizer is not cheap. I don't, you know, anyway. I use a slow-release polymer-coated fertilizer they sell called Polyon. All right, he says, I have a Shindow T282, and let's see, Steel 110 will work for most. Yeah, 110R is right in the middle. You know, some people use like the 94R, perfect for mix. Where do you get your equipment from? I don't know if he's talking to me or talking to GTMKIV. <laughs> I don't, I said, I'm not mowing grass. I mean, I have a Husqvarna trimmer. I have a Toro zero turn. Uh, I get a lot of Milwaukee battery stuff that they've given me. <clears throat> so, you know, as far as weed control, I've got a ground logic right on spreader sprayer. I've got a gram spray rig, 400 gallon split tank on the back of my truck. I drive a Ford F-350 with a dual rear wheels and a flatbed on it, which I think is great. And I've used to have one of those old school Shindow trimmers. Those are great. I don't know about the new ones or not. I have a half dozen T242. I think that's supposed to be shiny. He loves them. I think that's the, uh, is the T242, is that a Shindow, I'm assuming? Oh, he's talking to me. All right. Is that a Shindow, the T242? I'm trying to remember the one I had like a long time ago. It was old, but some of those older Shindows were supposed to be great. I, I've been using Husqvarna for years, and I think they're uh, good, not great. You know, I think they're lightweight. They perform well upside down, which I know people have opinions about that. But I've definitely flipped mine upside down and edge flower beds and sidewalks and stuff. And they seem to do well for that. Okay, Shindow T242. Yeah, I hadn't used a Shindow trimmer in a long time. And I, Are they owned by Echo now? I'm not sure. But um and then he's restoring my 91 F-150. Okay. Yeah, mine's a, what is mine? 2013, I think. So, I mean, it's 10 years old, but it's only got like 50,000 miles on it. I got it super low miles. Oh, man. What in the world? I go, uh, I'm a he, him. Okay. Does that sound good? What are your pronouns? Yeah. I'm a he, him. It should be pretty obvious. Uh, let's see here. Yes. Um, let's see here. Echo, yes, bought them. All right, any more questions? Lawn care specific questions, lawn business questions. I'm happy to stay on here. If you got more questions, I'm happy not to stay on here if, if you don't have any questions. Oh, here we go. RBL Jackson. How you doing? Let's uh, hope for a good year 23 to start off not so good. Sprayed a 2,4-D and pro diamond and got unexpected rain two, four, two days later. I don't think that matters. I mean, I really don't. I, I think, honestly, I don't think two hours later matters a whole lot. I mean, the, the pro diamond needs to be watered in. The 2,4-D, I, I just think these herbicides, I mean, I don't have the scientific research to show it, but I, I think they um, – they works very, very, very fast. So, uh, oh no, he said, oh, yeah, I, I'm happy to stay on here. I said, and questions were kind of dying down. So that's the reason I was, um, anyway, but yeah, I think you're fine on that. Like I said, for me, I'm, I'm using change up and mesofuron mixed with prodiamine in my round one. I started using that instead of 24D or triplet because I, a couple of weeds I kept seeing over and over, uh, yellow wood sorrel or oxalis and then 
field matter, and I, and I was end up having to go back spraying with change up. So I thought, well, why don't I just use change up to blanket app? But I'm using a really low rate, and it was basically the same cost at the low rate I'm using it. I was using triplet atrazine. Now I'm using change up and methyl furan, but I'm using the change up just at 12 ounces per acre, which is actually below the labeled rate, using the methyl furan a quarter ounce per acre, which is the lowest rate, I think, possibly. So really, really low rates, but uh, I think I'm going to have – Great results. I've had some bad luck with tenacity. I thought tenacity was like what everybody uses on the cool season lawns. I, I don't use it on warm season grasses, but I know it's extremely popular with the warm season. What's your POA solution? Um, if you're using tenacity, it makes me think you might have cool season grass. I, I don't have a POA solution with cool season grass. One suggestion, somebody might have mentioned this to me, and I thought it was a pretty good idea was spraying growth regulator on your cool season lawn. I mean, think about it. In March, depending on where you live, it may start growing really fast anyway. So the growth regulator can help suppress the, the growth of it, but it can also suppress the growth of the, the POA, including not putting up a seed head near as fast. So, uh, yeah, he's saying cool season grasses. So that, that's one idea. I mean, I don't... It seemed like there was a, a product out called POA Constrictor or something. But, I mean, you know, I know a lot of products for um, a lot of products for warm seed grass, but with cool seed grass is just tough, you know. But So that's one idea, growth regulator. How often do you do these live chats? Um, well, anywhere from once every three months to once a week, <laughs> depending on how I'm feeling. Like, in the winter, it's hard. You know, springtime, I'm, I'm on – estimate that i'm gonna probably be on here maybe every other week or so for till we get to the summer now that may fall to once a month i, I don't know but it's hard like at night my my kids are the age where we just got a lot of things going on at night soccer practice gymnastics all this stuff so it just makes it tough all right he says a pnw i'm not sure what pnw is uh cool season grass Hey, Jason, we emailed back and forth before. No questions. Just want to say thanks for the information. No problem. I appreciate you uh, being part of the live stream. And uh, I ran Speed Zone Red. I've considered the early app of MSM, but I worry about damaged oak trees. They get a little heavy handed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that yeah, MSM is, you know, use at high rates, it can be used to kill trees, basically. So, uh, that's why I pretty much always going to go with it at the lowest rate, the 0.25 ounces per uh, acre, because I feel like even if I one is super cheap and two it's effective. And then three, if I, if I even double sprayed it, I mean, I'm at 0.5 acres, which is 0.5 ounces per acre, which is still within the range. So personally, I understand concern. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not a valid concern. I just haven't uh, had anything any concerns personally or had, has seen anything like that other than pictures of other people's problems. So, so I don't know how much they're spraying. You know, it's not something I'm going to spray, you know, eight times a year either. I like the growth regulator idea. He's in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. PNW is Pacific Northwest. Now I know. All right. Thank you for people down here. They say I'm from LA, you know, and that means lower Alabama, which is not that funny of a joke, but I'm actually from the Northern part of Alabama. All right. Any more questions? We're 38 minutes into this. I really appreciate all you guys' support watching the channel. I'm, I'm kind of, I guess, as excited about YouTube as I've been in a while. I've been on YouTube for 12 years, and I've got some some ideas this year. If they don't work, I'll be mad. But hopefully it's going to work. I've got a uh, – I'm about to start doing some of these – I'm going to try to get some yards that are nasty. I've been waiting on the weather warm up. All the weeds will start popping up. RBL Jackson says, have a good, uh, great weekend. Thank you. You do the same. But I've got some uh, nasty yards that what I want to do with tons of weeds. And I want to, like, show you, like, the products. Help you maybe. Let's, like, let's look at the weeds. Hey, this is this weed. This is this weed. This is this weed. Here's the products I'm going to spray on this yard mix them up, show you how to mix them, go spray the yard, and then come back two, three weeks later and show you the results. I feel like that's something I haven't done a whole lot. I have done that some. But I feel like in that in that video, 
I'm teaching somebody something. I'm like, you know, hey, this is the exact products I'm using. This is how you mix them. This is the rate I'm mixing them at. At the same time, I'm also kind of showing like the before and after transformation stuff. Like, yeah, wow, look at that. It looks so much better than it did three weeks ago kind of deal. Now, the problem is like probably not going to drag the video out for nine months and, you know, go with it like that to where it's a sense of, you know, you drag it out nine months and then you know, where it's been mowed a lot and it's all turned green and fertilized and got it filled in. I mean, it will recover a great deal in the summer if it looked terrible in, in the spring. Um, but anyway, that's a long time between lawns. So that's one idea I have on YouTube. I've probably got a few other things I'm going to be attempting to do too. So, all right, guys, appreciate y'all watching the video and supporting the channel. And we will see you guys in future videos, hopefully. See ya.